So this is problem 77 from the 2012 AP Calc AB exam. This calculator question is another one that doesn't require the use of a calculator. Uh, they tell us that we've got a function f. It is continuous on the interval from 2 to 4. They tell us that f of 2 is 10, f of 4 is 20. Now, I have quite a bit going on on this graph right here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of start to piece it together for you based on just that opening sentence. f of 2 being equal to 10 simply means that the point 2 comma 10 has to be included on that graph. And then f of 4 equaling 20 simply means that the point 4 comma 20 has to be on that graph. Now, the rest of the stuff that you see in red here, the, this little section of, of line segments that I have uh, between those points, those aren't there from that opening sentence. Those are there uh, for the process of elimination that we're about to go through. Uh, what it says is which of the following is guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. Now, I guess if you don't know what the intermediate value theorem is, there, there are some other tempting options here. Uh, there are three theorems that you've used fairly regularly in calculus. Intermediate value theorem is one of them. Mean value theorem is another. The extreme value theorem is another. All of those are worked into these options at some point throughout them. So if you're not sure on what the intermediate value theorem says, you might be tempted to pick one that is actually the conclusion of one of those other theorems that I just mentioned. What the intermediate value theorem says is down at the bottom of the screen here. So if our function is continuous on the interval and we pick some number in between the y values at the endpoints, then there's got to be a number between a and b that we can plug into the function that produces that y value. So essentially, I can't get from this y value here to this y value here with a continuous graph unless I cross every y value intermediate to these two on the y-axis. So if we come back up to the graph, uh, this first option, f of x equals 13. So is the y value, the function value, going to equal 13 at least once on the interval from 2 to 4? Well, 13 is in between these y values, 10 and 20. Uh, the function is continuous, so the theorem holds, I'm guaranteed no matter how I connect it, if I connect it with some something weird like a V-shape, if I connect it with a line, some sort of a parabola, some sort of sinusoidal wave, no matter how I connect it, as long as I'm continuous from this point to this point, as long as my function is continuous, I have to cross this horizontal line at the Y value of 13 at least once somewhere within the interval. That is what the intermediate value theorem says. That is the option that we're looking for here. Uh, some of the other options, uh, this one here, f attains a maximum on the open interval 2 to 4. That's what the extreme value theorem is going to guarantee. Uh, and actually, I shouldn't say that because it would have to be the closed interval from 2 to 4. Uh, the extreme value theorem applies to a closed interval. But that's something that you've seen in that theorem, not the one that we are asked about in this particular problem. Uh, this one here, f prime of x. If prime of x equals 5 at least one time in the open interval 2 to 4, uh, if it also told us that our function was differentiable, we would have to have a slope of 5 for our tangent line. Our derivative value would have to be 5 at some point with our continuous and differentiable graph as we got from here to here. The reason why I drew the v-shape here is because it doesn't tell us anywhere that the function's differentiable. So although we don't see a ton of graphs with these cusps like I've drawn here, if this slope is below 5 and then this slope is above 5, the slope of this section is constant, the slope of this section is constant, nowhere on that graph am I going to equal positive 5 for my slope. So if, if it was a question about the mean value theorem and they told us that we were differentiable, then we'd be looking at option D. So some of those other options seem things you've seen in other theorems. Uh, as long as you know what the intermediate value theorem is, hopefully this problem makes a lot of sense to you.